So what have we done? We just created the input request structure. Next, we are trying to call this method. So what was our definition? Code products code is this. From the test case, you call the functional class method. Right now, we did this. We called it. Next. And when execution is completed, that means when this execution is completed, you verify whether everything worked as expected or not. Okay, let's think, guys. Think this is critical part. Once you understand this, now rest everything is only syntax. Syntax, chat, GPT, go karke, intelligently you can think and you can really do a lot of things. But core thing is this only. Okay, fine. Now, when now this is important statement. When execution is completed, you verify whether everything was as expected. Okay, now just think about it. We are writing unit code, unit testing code for this method to validate. Let's go to that business logic. Okay, now code will execute, this method will execute. We need to know whether everything was as expected. Now think with me and uh, really answer this question. Okay, what should be our expectations out of this method? Okay, just ask this question. What should be the expectation out of this method? There might be success expectations, there might be failure expectations. But now you should ask this question to yourself. Okay, this is the functional method I want to write unit testing for. What do I really expect from this method? And it's pretty simple if you understand. Okay, there go multiple expectations I have here. My first expectation is, let's see what expectations I have from this method. What are my expectations? How to do it in code? We will look at that later. That's the easy part. It's only syntax. But making the decisions is where it all comes down to. What do I expect out of this code first? OK. What we are saying in this if logic, okay, if payment dot payment request dot get payment dot get provider ID is not matching trustly then we expect an exception th to be thrown as simple as that so our expectation is first expectation is if we don't give trustly as payment as request dot get payment dot get provider ID. If you don't give this, okay, then we expect system to throw an exception. As simple as that. Okay. Second case. If Trustly comes, <laughs> simple reverse. If Trustly comes, then we don't expect an exception. We expect this code to completely come here and then just come back. There is a void return type. If the return type is having some value, we can write the logic based upon that, okay, return this, return that. But here we don't have that kind of return type. So we can simply expect this. Okay, if Trustly provided, then don't throw exception because we don't have a return type to check if the return type is coming success failure we don't have it it is void so try to understand key functional code will be the way it is test code <laughs> so just because your test code you are not able to catch the test case don't modify the functional code for that purpose this is important okay so now it is void. We don't have a return type. So we are trying to interpret okay, if trustly provided, then don't throw an exception. That's what if it does not come, that means it ran successfully and then this do validate everything is covered. Furthermore, the third thing, if you really see it here in detail, we are saying equal ignore case. OK, what does this mean? Okay, whether I give small case, trustly, capital case, camel case, whatever, 
any kind of case i pass in still it should not throw an exception so that is my third expectation from this method okay any case for trustly then don't throw exception any case of trustly don't throw exception that's my third expectation right now fourth now fourth what if think 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 you have to think for possibilities what if input request comes provider id equal to trustly space 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 then what do you expect this is how the testers will think corner cases trim kiya ke nahi kiya code now what do you think Deho. honestly speaking in the code right now it's going to maybe just check it's not matching trust and it will throw an exception but now the tester might think or the product owner might think okay even if this comes you should process it assuming it's trustly but we have not written in the code like that this is how when you're writing test cases it helps you to understand how you should even write functional logic when you're writing test cases, it helps you to understand how you should write functional logic. Okay, this is this concept is called as test driven development. TDD, you might have heard this thing. Okay, while you're writing the test cases, it will keep telling you more and more ideas. Are you, did you take care of this? Did you take care of this? This concept is called as TDD, test driven development. Your development, which is driven because of the test cases which you're writing. Right now, if you just think deeper, you realize, oh, is me kya karing? And then you realize, oh, in the code, I have not taken care of that use case. Right? So automatically, you need to now discuss with product owner, okay, what should we do in this case? Now, it's a business requirement. You have to discuss with your product owner. You cannot take your call independently. You will check with him, okay, what if the user is biting, passing some statements like this? Should we consider it trustly or should we not consider it? If the product owner say yes, yes, even for such cases, consider it trustly, then fine, this logic is okay. If the product owner says no, this is not trustly, we can they they have like not passed it properly, or like if they are saying okay, yeah, this is uh like okay, consider this as trustly if they say so in your code, you would have to trim it. So first you trim it, then you verify it. Right? Again, if you think deep, this is a business requirement now. Check with product. Okay. Case one will be here. If this is okay, if this is okay, then no exception. If okay, if trimming needed, you can put that as part of the business logic, it, then modify code to trim the value before verifying that means this if this is okay that means you would have to first trim it and then process it okay if not okay not okay then raise exception now what does this mean it could simply mean okay, okay so how about we do it something like this? Just have a look here, guys. There is a refactor method in IDE. You can simply do it like this. Just see here. I selected this path. Okay. Payment request dot get payments dot get provider ID. I'm clicking right click on this. I'm clicking refactor. And I'm seeing extract local variable clicked on that and i'm saying by default id is also intelligent it is saying provider id yeah that's what it is okay just see what has happened you can take snippets of code and you can refactor it to store it the way you want it 
okay if people say the logic should be okay yes even if this comes consider it valid so you would have to trim it now in order to trim it you would have to do first this and maybe dot trim and then here provider dot a if you write this kind of logic that is what when you're writing test case you got that idea oh this can happen and now let me try to protect this code like this so you modified the code in order to support this you modified the code in order to support this guys getting it getting it test case we are writing it is telling us okay code mein ye ho gaya, wo ho gaya. okay now further let's think something more also if you just